Welcome back to the Football Manager Save here on the Chesnoy Plays channel. Thank you for your patience in waiting for the next episode to come out. As you may or may not be aware, I had COVID, so it was out of action for just over a week in terms of recording. And it was a couple of days from the end of recording since uh, I played FM last as well. So it has been a while. I appreciate that. I apologise for that. We are in October to refresh your memories. We are currently in... Good enough form to be happy with our performances so far this season in our first year at championship level. Solidly mid-table, seven points clear of the drop. The squad is decent. It's playing very well, or well enough at least for the time being. And we're about to make another addition. We ended, I can't remember whether we ended with the, with the footage of it or not in the last episode, but Hannibal has been released from Manchester United. Had a wonderful season for Blackburn at championship level in season one. And now in season three is going to join us for free. For free. Yeah, with a minimum fee release clause of 29 million. So that's going to get accepted and he's going to be into the squad pretty damned quickly if you don't mind my doing so. Hannibal joins and we shall register him immediately. Thank you very much. So... We're in a good spot. Four-star player, supposedly close to his current potential, but I'm expecting a bit of growth considering he's only 22. He's still He's got 44 caps for Tunisia already at just 22 years of age. Has the chance to be a player of a generation for that nation and hopefully will be a player of the season for us. But we shall wait and see. He'll make his debut for us Probably as a sub, I would say, more so than anything else against Hull at home in the next game. And then with Swansea in the Carabao Cup, Derby County away in the league as well. These are fixtures at the minute against teams that are around us in the division. So certainly we're hoping to pick up some points if we can. Then seventh place Ipswich. And then as we push into probably the next episode, Stoke, QPR, Sunderland, Reading, etc. So we'll wait and see how things go. But... Confident at this stage, given our experience thus far and the improvements we've made to the squad. Confident of staying in the division. Wait and see whether that confidence is well founded or not by the end of the year. But Hannibal is onto the bench and hopefully will make an impact when called upon from that position. Ready? Let's start with a win. Drop the video a like to make sure you don't miss out on any more. Subscribe to the channel. Uh, and you certainly won't hit that notification bell whilst I hit play. And fingers crossed, three points are on the way. Still waiting for him to really hit the ground in the league. Oh, but that left the ground and was never coming back down. Casey Palmer with a wonderful goal to give Cambridge United a 1-0 lead. Who needs your striker to score when your midfielders can score like that? Anthony Brianson to Casey Palmer to the top right-hand corner. 1-0 the U's. Don't foul him. Uh. Oh, that was weird. That looked like it was going to the right corner and then flew into the left. It might be because the camera angles that fooled us a little bit there. It looked like the... Uh, the keeper might have pushed it into the far corner. Hull have equalised here. Have a bit of a closer look at it. Yeah, the keeper's gone to try and push it away. And just gotten it wrong there, Kelly. And unfortunately, Hull have a goal back and are now level in the tie. We'll make some changes, I think, just to keep things fresh and ensure we don't lose the game. Casey Palmer with a free kick. Six minutes to go. Casey Palmer at the double. Cambridge United may well get the result today. That's two screamers in the same game from Casey Palmer. Let's waste some time, please. Insert your Zizou. Insert your Zizous. Unbelievable, Jeff. We are going to get a 2-1 win at home against Hull City. Thanks to, in no small part, Casey bloody Palmer. Unless Hull gets something from this highlight at the very death. But it is us in possession and in the ascendancy. And it looks more likely to be 3-1 than it does 2-2. Hannibal, maybe? Oh, it's poor from the keeper. Huang Yuzhou is offside, though. 
so it won't count. There will be no third goal, but there will be three points. Thank you very much. And I don't think I'm going to make any changes to the side that just beat Hull, other than the enforced ones through injury. Uh... I could, I could bring Caddy back in. It said he's fit to start, so I think I will. And that will probably be the only change we make other than the injuries. I guess technically that's an inju injury change as well. It's just he's coming back from rather than he has gone to. Right, fallen out of the starting lineup because of injury. John Jules up top for Swansea. I don't know how seriously they're taking this competition. Uh... I'll say we owe them after we lost to them last time. We'll see if we can get ourselves a uh, see if we can get ourselves a decent result here in the Carabao Cup. A bruised ankle. He can play on with a bruised ankle. Casey Palmer with a freak. Oh my god, he's done it again. Casey Palmer with three goals in the first game and a half today. Two of them stunning free kicks. That one, the best of the bunch, arguably, from the wide angle into the top corner. We celebrate again with Sokmus gifting five subs to the channel as a result. Oh my god, Casey Palmer went for the overhead kick. Watch that back in the replay. Casey Palmer went for an overhead kick that has fallen to Warren Caddy and he's buried it. Casey's here and that's the overhead kick attempt that Warren Caddy then heads on the way. Casey Palmer is having the episode of his life. At the Liberty Stadium and a corner for Swansea, but we have a two goal advantage. So even if they are able to grab one here, I don't think there's enough time left in the game for them to turn it into a penalty shootout. They have buried a very good goal though. Ty Sodger's first goal of the season does make things slightly nervy here in the final few seconds. But those final few seconds have ticked away. And we will be through to the next round, the fifth round of the Carabao Cup. Furthest we've gone in this competition. Again, got to be happy with the win. Delighted with the momentum we're building. And into the next game away from home against Derby we'll go. Hoping to make it three wins from three so far today. Casey Palmer again. Absolutely brilliant. But that overhead kick, certainly the most impressive thing about that. That said... It's not like his goal wasn't that bad either, was it? Quarter-final draw for the Carabao Cup then. Change the speed to three times. Uh, there is one obvious so side that we'd like to be drawn against there to give us a chance of making it to the semis. That would be Ipswich. But we are in the quarter-finals of the Carabao Cup. And we hope to have Ipswich away as our draw. But we don't get our wish. So let's just advance to the end. We get, in the Carabao Cup quarterfinals, Leicester City away. 18th in the Premier League, Leicester City. We have them away from home in the Carabao Cup quarters. It's not an obvious tie to win. But certainly, it's a game we'll give our all in. All right. Fair enough. Here we go then. Derby County away. Two wins from two so far. Although we have been very reliant on Casey Palmer for those wins. They've got former Cambridge man Uche in their lineup. Let's see what we can do against Derby now then. I won't say go out there and impress me. I'll just say go out there and enjoy yourselves and lift the pressure. This season is all about just enjoying being at a higher level. Not too much pressure. If we stay up, great. If we don't, it's not. Ma it doesn't matter. It kind of does financially, but we won't let them know that. This is a long highlight. A very long highlight. And you know what that means? That means... Goal! Warren Caddy with his seventh of the season. We brought him to play out wide. Turns out, up top through the middle is his best position. Another goal for the season. For the man that's only at the club for probably a year because he might not get a work permit next year. And I don't know if I can use an ESC two years in a row. I doubt it. But we're enjoying him whilst we've got him. 1-0 Cambridge. Well, with six minutes again added on at the end of the game. It does look like we might be about to get another victory in the championship. And indeed, we do get another victory in the championship. 
None of them are really convincing victories, but the points keep coming. Warren Caddy with the goal. Aziz Yakubu is going to come on trial. Might as well show you him here. Physically exceptional, technically good in the right places. Don't know if he's actually going to be any good though. And at the minute, Warren Caddy is doing the business up top. Huang Yuzhou, I hoped would do the business, hasn't. But Casey Palmer is still on form. Another assist for him today. Toffolo wants to leave. I don't want to sell him, but I'm happy for him to go if it means I can buy someone else in at left back. And we're just thrilled with how things are going so far this season. Oh, let me switch at home then. Enforced change to put Jack Kingdon in. But only because Alfie Doy is suspended. Other than that, continually, I don't really want to change a winning side. Alexi Pitu has been poor recently, but so is Charlie Kirk on that left-hand side. So neither of them really excelling. We'll give Charlie Kirk the start and maybe maybe Pitt would be better off the bench. Wait and see. Just wait and see, I guess. Let's wait and see. Off we go. Ipswich. John Duran up top. Connor Chaplin's very good. Scott McKenna, Harry Clark, Joel Ward, Joe Bryan. We've got Jesse Marsh in, in charge. Just say go out there and enjoy yourselves again. Lifting the pressure. We're at home as well. It's a local derby. It switched about an hour and a bit from Cambridge down the motorway. Certainly a game where we could get a point from. But Jeez Louise. I'd love to have someone like John Duran at my disposal. Take Jay-Z off for risk of him getting... A booking and sent off and we will start to time waste and be a bit more disciplined let's try and see this through a nil nil draw against it which is a good result he says as it switch immediately have a highlight and immediately get a penalty John Duran fouled by Anthony Brianson oh, typical just as we make the changes in the tactical alterations to try and get the point, we throw it away. Connor Chaplin's 10th goal of the season from the spot. Ipswich 1, Cambridge 0. Never mind. It's a 1-0 defeat. And as you can tell from the stats, a pretty deserved loss. But to lose it in the manner we did with a, a mistake giving away a penalty... Is, an, is frustrating. We could absolutely have gotten a point from that. We're still 11 points clear of the drop a third way through the season, so... Very happy so far. Casey Palmer's out for a few days, but that's fine. We've got a two-week break now till the next game against Stoke because of internationals. So that will probably be where we call this... No, we'll play, we'll play Stoke in this episode as well. We'll play Stoke in this episode as well. Not finished just yet. Wants me to move Foti Central and move Hannibal around in the team, but I'm actually gonna, I'm just gonna still play the way that we're on or where we're at right now. Palmer moved back central, Caddy on the right, and Huang Yu Zhou up top. Maybe with all of my top goal scorers in the side, there might be more of a chance of us getting a victory out of this one than than previous. Troy Parrot up top for them is gonna be very good. Jack Rodoni in the midfield is going to be sensational as well. But our home games are important. I'll put a little bit more pressure on this one. On the back of a defeat, I want us to show a response. Troy Parrott is good, but not sensational. Although he did have a very good loan spell at Reading last season. And I was just going to have a look at Rodoni as well. The refs give a foul for that. It says, surely a dive by Rodoni. In the fourth minute, Stoke with a penalty that the referee has bought for them. Sold the dive. And Jeremy Livolin gives Stoke City a 1-0 lead. And again, feel hard done by. It was a penalty against Ipswich. It's been a penalty against Stoke. Jack Rodoni looks pretty decent still. 
They signed him for 4.4 million from Huddersfield, which is a lot of money. Amadou with the ball over the top. Laurent in behind. Keepers come for it. Not got there. Going to get back into position now. Amadou to Laurent again into the middle. Larice. It's 2 0 Stoke. They are turning up at the Abbey Stadium and putting us to the sword. I don't know about whether it's getting embarrassing, as the commentary just said, but certainly it's not put, not showing us in the best of lights anyway. 72% possession. We're bossing the ball, but we've had no attacking highlights. And it's 3-0 Stoke. This is a uh, smash and a grab by Stoke City. This is an, an unreflective scoreline. And I'm starting to regret throwing it into today's episode because this hasn't gone well at all, has it? Kirk, Bennett, Foti, Kirk. I mean, it's a good move. It's a great goal. That's the sort of thing we must have been doing all game long. We just haven't seen it highlight-wise because we've created just as many chances as Stoke. And that's sensational football. And the finish is emphatic. Took a deflection off the defender, I think, to help it pass the goalkeeper. But still, if you look at the stats, the XG's not as high. But overall, we were in that game. And uh, I'm pretty damn disappointed not to have taken anything from it. Again, kind of makes me regret continuing on the episode rather than just ending it where we were. But presumably, in the terms of the universe and... Superstition and stuff, it would have happened anyway. It just happened at the end of this one rather than the beginning of the next. We're still 10 points clear of the drop, and that's the most important thing. It's the only thing that we're really that bothered about, to be honest. Although their manager gloating about it is a little bit... A little bit unfair. Adam May's out. We'll leave that to the physio. That's fine. Yeah, three days QPR away. We're going to change things, and we're going to play a different 11, I think. But that will be in the next episode. Thank you very much for watching today. Those of you on uh, YouTube, appreciate it very much. In fact, I'm going to send my assistant to that. Thank you very much for watching today. Appreciate it. Hopefully you're glad to see Football Manager back. Formula One will be back soon as well, if not already back. And we'll start to get the, uh, the alternative content dovetailing now that I'm back up and running as well. So uh, that's all for this one. Thank you very much for watching. I will see you in the next.